Okay, so why is it important for you to find the skull? It would write a violation. And that was after all that big investigation. I was left with this big problem. It's a problem to me. It's a big issue to me. I get that. So let's go find the skull. So we need to find the skull. Yes, you're right. Eighteen months ago, I read this incredible book. It's called The Price by Janice Madden, an 81-year-old author who lives in Cowell in South Australia. It's based on the true story of her auntie, Eva Madden, who was born in 1896 and grew up in a small, dark, smoky, poor railway town in England called Crewe. It's a, it was a massive story, wasn't it? It was the massive, biggest trial ever held in... Crew girl murdered, taken for ride in taxi. New that's Zealander just... executed. So that's that's the one talking about the skull in court. Mm. For the trial, the prosecution exhumed Eva's body, took the flesh from her skull, and presented her skull in court as forensic evidence. It was a very dramatic court case regarding Price. This is from a newspaper cutting. The it came from the Crew Chronicle. July 13th. Yes, I found it at the Crew Chronicle. They reprinted it so that my grandparents could read it. So I think we need to find the descendants of the original doctor in 1935. We do. Where do you think the skull is now? I think, I don't know, I think it's at the back of someone's wardrobe. As a piece of evidence? As a as piece, a... no, 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 as a part of the collection or the fact that people did and still do collect skulls. It had displayed over the years. What did she say to him? She said to him, you're not the man I really love. I had another lover before you. And he, I lost him, but I really loved him and I don't love you. I don't love you at all and you can clear off. I'm not going to be with you anymore. You can forget me buying a house and a farm. You can't even keep the truth about giving up drink. You're false, you're a liar. I hate you. What, Jan, how are you doing? This is the only, I've told you, this is the only thing that matters to me. Considerable interest was taken by the public when Dr Gilmore, pathologist at the Auckland Public Hospital, produced the skull of the murdered woman, Eva Madden, when this grisly exhibit was taken from the container, which was a biscuit box. A minute ago, they were met going to make love. He didn't know where it came from, he didn't understand it. And he backed away a little, but she found a big stone and she threw it at him and hit him on the side of the head. And he was so shocked, and then he got mad. He got really mad. It took him a long time to get angry, because he was a plastic kind of bloke. But she was determined on doing him damage, and he couldn't stop her. He didn't know what to do. He loved her. He wanted it all to go back as it was. Forget the hip floss, forget the drinking. But you, you, she couldn't go back, because he'd broken the very one thing she asked him to do, to give up drink, and he wouldn't do it. How did this all come about? It came about by having the authority of the Prime Minister to do the dig and unearth the body. So, okay, so I think that the start of the search, we must go, let's start, let's go back to Auckland University. Yeah. And see where they've got to. What was the connect? Why Auckland University, can I ask you? What's the connection between... The connection between the Auckland University and the skull is yeah. that... It replaced the medical centre where the skull went to. Fantastic. It's a real link. 
These are Eva's coffin handles, taken from the grave. Sad. Very sad. And he picked up, he looked around to defend himself and he picked up a, a manukkad branch off one of the bushes. And it was tremendously strong. And he hit her in the head on it. It hit her in the head. And she moved back, but still she charged at him shouting and screaming at the top of her voice so it, then he, he, he realised his blood ran down her head and he hit her again hard and it cracked her skull and she fell down and he realised what he'd done and he looked down and he knelt down by her and lifted her up and she was still alive Angus was excavated the grave, was thoughtful enough to have collected them for me. He'd made a decision to do it himself, to personally dig up the grave using one labourer and one small tractor. And he said, sit by the phone and I will describe to you what I find as I go under the ground. And, uh, How did you feel that day? Terrible. And then he went deeper and he said, now my, I'm eight foot down and I found the remains of the coffin. He said, get a chair and sit down. I want you to sit down. And so I sat down by the phone and he said, I'm looking through the remains now. And then there was a pause of about two minutes. And then he said, rather emotionally, you're right. You're right, you know. And I said, say it, Angus, just say it. And he said, it's headless. I have read through hundreds and hundreds of pages of documents that Jan has collected over the last 27 years. This incredible detail about the trial, the murder, eyewitness statements, um, details about Eva's entire life, her, her, her whole family. And the one thing that really upsets Jan is knowing that Eva's skull is out there somewhere and that she can't find it. I really want to help Jan find Eva's skull.